What's up, y'all? Uh, if you saw the last video, you might have seen that this car had the transmission go out and leave us stranded uh, in a whole other state. Well, in this video, it's getting a new transmission. I'm going to go into as much detail as I can. I'm going to pull the engine and transmission out to replace the transmission. Uh, I'm going to do it step by step. I'm going to try and do my best to show you guys how to do this. If you're doing it, because I have a little bit of experience with it, I've already replaced the engine in this car, so I'm pretty familiar with the process. This is going to be a long video, so get yourself something to drink, get comfortable, not be leaving hardly anything out. Again, this is going to be a very detailed video. You can use this video as a reference if you're doing this yourself. However, I am not responsible if you cause any damage to your vehicle if you do this yourself. Just, uh, this is more for entertainment, but again, Feel free to use this as a reference. The car is fixed now, I'm just recording this intro. So with no further ado, let's get into it, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Today's the day we're gonna get started on this thing. Um, I got a new transmission for it already. I'm gonna show that to you in a minute. Actually, there's the trailer right now. I'm gonna take it to a shop with a lift and an engine hoist, and we're gonna try to do this right. This is the new transmission. Uh, pay no attention to the truck. It's not mine, just borrowing it. Uh, it allegedly only has 162,000 miles on it. Um, I see no leaks on it anywhere seals don't leak it's got a torque converter on it it's right here you just can't see it so it ought to be a good candidate the fluid that's in there doesn't smell burnt they drain them at the junkyard so there's not much in there but it smells clean it looks clean so it should be good all right now the question will it make it onto the trailer under its own power go 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 You can hear the transmission not sounding too good. It'll back up. So uh, we're going to get this thing to the shop and we'll be back. All right, well, we're out here on location. I'm going to start out by just undressing the basics. I'm going to take the battery out, take the intake off, because all this is going to have to come off no matter which way I do it, because the transmission is down there and a lot of this is going to be in the way. Pretty simple stuff. The hood's gonna come off. Uh, still haven't decided if I'm gonna pull it out the top or the side or the bottom. I'm leaning towards pulling it out the top. Just pull the motor and everything out together and just separate them up in the air. Seems like the easiest way, but really not sure yet. But no further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Well, it's starting to lose daylight, but uh, I've got a good chunk of it out so far. I got the battery out, got the intake off got a bunch of the wiring undone all these plugs unplugged from the trans uh still haven't really decided what exactly i'm gonna do uh i've been thinking about just pulling the whole engine and trans all at once only problem with that is you gotta drain you gotta you gotta disconnect the radiator hoses you gotta drain all the uh antifreeze uh you gotta do something about the ac system which that's not so bad i mean you can really just take the compressor off and put it to the side and just pull the motor but then of course you gotta take the belt off and to get the belt off on these cars for some reason is a f bitch because one person has to hold the tensioner which is right there and the other person has to slip the belt off which yeah that's how they always are but these for some reason on these cars, the belts are so tight and the tensioner is like bottomed out really hard in order for the belt to get on. And I'm not sure why that is, but so eh, that's something to think about. Other option is to lift the car up and completely drop the subframe and just have something holding the engine up so that you can drop the subframe 
without the engine falling out. Like I said, there's a lot, there's a few different ways to do it. There's really not any information on the internet or on YouTube about swapping a transmission. Uh, there was one guy that unbolted this half of the subframe. There's three bolts and he unbolted this half and he left, I guess he left the other half bolted and he took a scissor jack and he jacked, I can't get in there to show you, but he jacked, he, he uh, spread the subframe from the vehicle and pulled the transmission out from the side. It seems like a sketchy way to do it, but it seems like a really easy way to do it if you don't consider the fact that the transmission weighs, you know, 200 pounds or so. I'm probably just going to take a few more little small things off here and then go sleep on it tonight and put a little more thought into how exactly I'm going to do this. By the way, it's Tuesday now. The goal is to get the car running by the weekend. So that gives us four days, which I think it should be enough, three or four days. Uh... And I'm doing this mostly by myself because everybody's busy and it's hot and nobody really wants to work on this and I don't blame them. <laughs> and, uh, it's my fault the car broke down in Missouri because I'm the idiot who decided it was good enough to drive it there even though the transmission was going out. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I guess uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. Oh, wait, one more thing. Um, I did see somebody, I read that somebody... Uh, took this front cover off of the transmission which has that mount bolt there which that's the biggest thing that gets in the way of pulling it straight up is this right here and that mount so what they did was they took that here i'll show you on this one this is the new transmission as you see it's quite beautiful um but yeah what they did was they took this front cover off and just pulled this whole thing up that way that's one way to do it. I doubt I'm going to do it that way because I really don't want to break this seal. And I don't want to, I really don't want to open this thing up at all if I don't have to because I am not good with transmissions. I don't like automatic transmissions. I don't like working on them. So we'll be back tomorrow. All right, it's Wednesday morning now. Got Monster Energy Ultraviolet. I don't have Ultra Strawberry Dreams only because the gas station I went to didn't have them. So I got this one. I've decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the engine and the transmission both out at once i uh i've actually done it before I, this is a this isn't the original engine i've replaced it and that's how i did it before i just pulled everything out at once there's a guy on youtube that did it and it's very simple it's actually gonna be simpler this time around because i'm not actually uh swapping an engine i'm just swapping the transmission so uh the biggest thing i was afraid of was the wiring harness because there's a bunch of wires over there and they all go in right here but all you really got to do is unplug it from the computer in there and it just comes out and then you can just leave it sit on the engine you don't have to i don't know why it's not focusing why is my hand so bright okay yeah um sure so yeah you can just leave all that on there and just lift it out and then for the ac i'm just gonna have to take that belt off and hopefully that goes well and then i'm gonna have to disconnect the power steering lines and of course, we got to take the axles out. And to do that, it's not too bad. You just got to undo the shocks. And then uh, you got to loosen these big axle nuts. Hopefully, they're not too bad. Yeah. And uh, get the axles out, which that might be a job in itself. But overall, not too terrible. So it's about 7 in the morning right now. I'm going to hurry up and get started because... Uh, it's like 70 something degrees right now and it's supposed to go up into the high 90s today with a heat index of 113. I'm gonna just tinker around on it for a few hours and then once it starts getting hot I'm gonna go back home relax and then probably come back this evening. So with no further ado let's get started. I guess I'll show you how to undo these electronics. It's pretty easy. Make sure you uh, leave your car unlocked when the battery's disconnected. You just gotta take the glove box off. Hang on. To do that you just kind of squeeze it and then there's gonna be a screw over here. I just leave that on. It's gonna hang like that. You're just gonna undo these plugs here. And once you do that, the wires, and then you're gonna undo the, there's a little thing up there. You're gonna undo that and it's gonna now come when you right undo out. the ECU wiring in the dash here, you don't have to unplug the top ones, just the bottom three, because those are the only, those are the only ones that go outside and those, or that goes inside 
for interior stuff. But I've undone the bolts and on the outside. And it's going to give you a little bit of a fight. But it'll come out. I'll be back when I get that out. So I kind of lied about that. Uh, these come, it comes out from right here, but there's also some behind this plastic here that you're not, you can't see, but you'll be able to, you'll be able to like peep in there and you'll see it. There's a couple of more plugs. You're going to have to take this bottom piece off of here. And there's a couple more that plug in right here. I was wondering why it wouldn't come out. And it's because of those sneaky little wires that I didn't see there. So now it should come out. There you go. Now it's out. Now, you don't want to get too impatient with these. There's so many wires in here. There's so many wires and there's so many chances for you to just get too aggressive and just rip them out or cut them or whatever. So just try to take your time with this uh, and just be patient. It's a lot of like how-to videos don't really mention it because honestly it's annoying, but there's a bunch of little things that you're gonna have to disconnect and just make sure you disconnect everything you can before you actually pull it out. Like, for example, this uh, little coolant hose for the throttle body, you know, or vacuum hose or whatever it is. Just everything, make sure you disconnect every little thing you can see that's going to link the engine to the vehicle before you attempt to pull the engine out or you're going to start breaking stuff. Like I said, there's a lot, so I don't really think I can show you all of it, but uh, definitely the radiator hoses. Uh, your heater hoses, don't forget those. those. Those are the hoses that go into the vehicle that give you heat during the winter. Uh, all the wiring, obviously. The shift cable, which uh, I'll show you that. I'll get to that whenever I get there. Uh, any little ground wires that might be here and there. Just uh, make sure you undo everything. And I... I'm trying to do all the simple stuff up here first before I get into the big stuff down below. Well, this this is a big important little thing. This is your fuel line. It comes from the gas tank and it goes through here, swirls around there, and then it goes right in there to your fuel rail. So to get that off, this plastic piece just pulls off like that. And then you're gonna squeeze these yellow tabs And there we go. There's gonna be a little fuel in there, don't worry. Just uh, make sure when you put that back that you put it back on there really good or you're gonna have a fuel leak and you're gonna have problems if you have fuel spray in this area, especially by where the battery is. So yeah, make sure when you put that back that it's on there good and it clicks. Um, so this is a little detail I should probably tell you about. This, uh, there's a ground that's going to go into this fuse box here that's right by the driver's side fender. There's this ground, and then there's this little harness that goes up in here. To get this off, you just take that nut off, and then there's two little tabs. You're going to push those each this way in, like that. And it's going to, just both of them like that. You can do one at a time and give it a little wiggle and then do the other one, and it'll just come right out. Now for this harness, you're going to have to pry this whole fuse panel. You're going to have to wiggle it, pry it, just, you know, take your time with it. Don't get aggressive with it. It's, it snaps into this plastic box here. And once you get that off, it's going to lift up. And then these two plugs right here, are that's that harness. So once you undo that, the, the, the harness will be free. From the fuse box. do that the entire there's an angry bird over there somewhere oh look there he is look at him <laughs> oh there he goes anyway once you get that off from the fuse box this entire harness should be completely free assuming you've unplugged everything from the transmission and uh, all these plugs are pretty simple you just 
they, a lot of them just have these little tabs that you push push those tabs down and they just pull right out it shouldn't shouldn't be too hard to get them off now sometimes you might have one like this uh i had this problem with this one before it's one of these uh transmission sensor plugs and uh, i mean there's really not much you can do about that just when you plug it back in as long as the as long as it's making contact it's good but uh there, there might you might have this one or a few plugs as long as they're not all broken you could still probably use the harness but if you just have one bad one like this you could still probably use the harness and it'll be fine it's not worth ripping the whole harness out just to replace one plug anyway so now all the wiring is free I'm just gonna lay it off to the side right there and make sure you separate it don't, don't get it tangled up with your battery cables or anything i don't know why this thing is not focusing tonight or today i think that's pretty much all of the electrical yay All right, so I got the radiator all drained out. Uh, I pulled the transmission cooler lines off and just a little bit of fluid that came out of there. Man, it stunk. It's burnt bad, it's black. Transmission fluid is not supposed to be black and reek of burning smell, but it is. And I was gonna go ahead and drain the pan on the transmission because I'm probably gonna use this pan on the new transmission because at the junkyard, they uh, bust a hole in the bottom of the pan to drain it instead of just taking a bolt out but i don't have a big allen socket allen! get to take the bolt out so i'm gonna have to wait till i till i have one on hand for that uh so now i decided i'm gonna try and get down here and get some of this apart i got a socket but i don't have a big impact which is really the tool you want to use for this if you try to use a ratchet you're gonna have to uh put something to jam the jam this or have someone hold the brake and i don't really i don't want to jam this because it's kind of sketchy you can tear up the threads that way and i don't have anybody to hold, hold the brake for me so what i might do is i'm probably going to undo the shock or undo the strut from the hub and just hang it that way uh and then i can maybe get the axle out of the transmission i really need to replace this axle because that boot's not looking so hot this axle's actually never been replaced since I've had it, so I really, really need to replace it, but I might just wait on that or replace it while I'm at this. But either way, it needs to be replaced. So yeah, I just gotta think about what I'm gonna do here. Well, I guess it's my lucky day on the driver's side axle at least, but look, your transmission fluid should not look like that, okay? Oh yeah, also, mmm, it smells like It kind of smells like if you were to uh if you were to burn fritos in oil <laughs> it's not supposed to smell like that y'all but uh yeah driver's side axle pretty much just popped right out i just uh loosened these bolts i left this one in and i just kind of shifted it just so as not to stretch that boot too much and gave it a couple of love taps with a screwdriver flathead screwdriver and she came out i guess that's good Let's see how the other side comes out but uh, it's interesting that this came out, and I'll show you why. A new transmission, the passenger side axle was already out, but the driver's side was still in, and I fought it so hard trying to get it off. I even ended up ripping it, like just ripping the boot out along with the rest of the axle, and I could not get it out. So got to get this off at some point before I put it in there, but at least we know that one came out. Now I'll just try to get the uh, passenger side one out. This one, I really need to replace this axle too. I was scared I was going to mess up the one on the driver's side and I really would have to replace it, but I'm probably just going to wait on that now. This side usually comes out pretty easily as long as, as long as that comes out. There's us here look. Now, a lot of people, a lot of the guys on YouTube that do the engine re removal videos, for some reason they overlook this step or anything to do with the axles. They just say, yeah, you take the axles out. Well, I'm showing you how to do it because it's a very, it can be a pain. So there's this bolt that holds tension on this bearing that's in here. And then you got to get this snap ring out. It's going to 
you're going to squeeze it and it's going to come off to the side right here and then this all should just move out but sometimes this bearing gets stuck to this hub and the axle itself will be stuck into the transmission like that one kind of was or like that new one is at least on that side it looks like it came out far enough just by undoing the one shock bolt if it doesn't i'll just undo them both yeah so i don't even have to take the axles out of the hubs it looks like which is pretty cool guys look at this so i got that bolt right there loose and i got this clamp off watch this oh what yep yep it came right out so uh that was luck while you're under here you can check that bearing so i undid both bolts on both sides of the vehicle and that allowed me to move this down far enough to where the axle is completely free from the transmission as you can see there and you can see daylight through the transmission because i got the other one out too here i'll show you same thing on this side undone both bolts this one i might have to detach the sway bar or something because i don't know i mean it's it's pretty free so it's probably fine so yeah so this side's free as well and now that's pretty much the worst part of it it's over all i gotta do now is finish up up here i'm gonna take the radiator out and uh undo power steering lines and under the air com or the ac compressor uh there's something interesting about the ac compressor that i'm gonna have to show you when i get there okay so i went to get the um ac compressor out by uh taking the belt off by uh undoing the tensioner and it simply wouldn't happen i tried as you can see i stripped a little bit and if i would have pushed any harder it probably would have broke that off and then i was going to go ahead and try to get the t uh that little shock hydraulic spring tensioner thing whatever off and try to get the tensioner off that way but i'm not even going to do that I'm about to cut this belt off. Boom, just like that. I don't know why these belts are so tight on these. When I get a new belt, I'm probably going to get them. Probably going to get one that's like an inch or a half an inch longer. And now that the belt's off, and I also took the radiator off, because it gives me a little more space here. Uh, these three bolts on the AC compressor, get those out easily with a ratchet. This one, it's uh, behind the, the AC line, and the whole idea of taking the AC compressor off is that we don't take this off because we want to keep the Freon in there. So that bolt's right there behind that, so you, can, you could theoretically do it like that, but if you try to do that, it's really tight and you're just going to strip it. So what you got to do is you got to take a 12 millimeter wrench. I just sacrificed mine out of my kit there, and you got to grind this end so it's flat like that and then it'll fit in there that's the only way to do it you gotta grind i had to grind this one a good bit too so we'll break that loose here i'll be right back once you get it loose you can get it by hand but then oh no what the heck how am i get it out so what you do is you take all these all the way out and once you back these bolts all the way out you'll be able to loosen this bolt and just bring the compressor out with it and then eventually you'll get it all the way out and the bolt's just going to stay there while the compressor hangs here all right, well it's getting kind of hot it's almost 10 o'clock now so we've been here for about three hours made decent progress maybe not quite as much as i was hoping but considering how smoothly and how smoothly it went with the axles and how not smoothly it went with this it's not too bad uh i just got under the car undid the exhaust right there you can just that's all you gotta do for the exhaust really is just leave the manifold and then leave that hanging and then you gotta go under here and make sure that o2 sensor is unplugged from that plug up there or you're gonna rip the wire whenever you try to pull it yeah all i gotta do is get this shifter off and i gotta undo the power steering lines and the engine should literally be ready to come out so uh we're gonna let it be hot for today and then later on this evening we'll come back and we're gonna get this thing out
All right, it's nice and dark and cool. It's after nine o'clock now. We're back here this evening working on the Camry. Uh, I still gotta get the shifter off. I gotta get the power steering lines off. And then I almost forgot. I gotta get, uh, I gotta take those two bolts that hold that bracket off so that that axle can stay there. When I pull the engine up and out, I'm thinking when I pull it out, I'm gonna have to kind of put this, this end's gonna have to come up first and this end's gonna kind of stay there. Cause it's gonna, it's, if I try to pull it straight up, it's gonna hit on this or I'm gonna have to shift it over when I pull it up. Cause there's a little bit of space there. Uh, not sure how I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna figure it out as I go. So it should be interesting. <laughs> All right, real quick before I uh, start tearing all this apart and pulling it out, I'm going to drain the fluid out of the trans while I'm undoing that. So uh, let's see what comes out of here. Oh my gosh, that is black. Guys, look at this. Can't even make this up, y'all. This is bad. That's why this is getting replaced. Ah. Uh. It flows like water. Um, it's okay. It was flowing kind of quick there, trying to overflow out of the pan. Oh, it smells awful. Oh. Oh, that smells bad. All right, so for your power steering lines, this is your reservoir right here. This big hose is gonna go straight down, down there to the bottom of the pump and then you're gonna have to undo that and you're gonna have to undo this high pressure line here it's just a bolt right there i think that's a 17 millimeter put a pan or something under there so you don't make a mess on your buddy's driveway or, or your driveway or wherever you're doing it just got done pulling that uh bracket off back there it was three bolts it's two on the top and one on the bottom there I showed you guys that power steering stuff from above but you can actually get to it from under here it's actually better under here. You just gotta undo that one and the high pressure one above it. It turns out, it's not really a question, you're gonna lose everything that's in here, uh, but I wouldn't cry too much about it. It's literally just transmission fluid, so, and it's not a whole lot, so we can easily replace that. But uh, when you take those lines off, it is gonna drain every bit of it out of there. So just make sure you got a pan underneath. Okay, big important step that I, almost forgot to mention you're gonna come under the car and you're gonna look right there this is the transmission pan engines over here right up here above the exhaust there's gonna be this little plastic cover you literally just pop it off by hand and then inside there's gonna be six bolts on the flywheel you're gonna undo all those you're gonna turn the engine by hand with a ratchet and a 19 millimeter socket you're gonna turn the crank and you're gonna get each one of those bolts out because if you don't do that you're not gonna be able to split the transmission and the engine and if you try to do it that way it's gonna be very difficult and you're also gonna end up pulling the torque converter out with it and you don't want to do that so this is the, tra the new transmission what, what we're doing when we do that is we're unbolting each of these bolts this is what bolts your engine to your transmission. This is what makes your engine and transmission able to work together. So yeah, don't forget to undo those and don't forget to put them in and snug them down pretty good when you get them in there. So now with that, all I gotta do is take this shifter off. I don't know why I've been putting this shifter off so much, but take the shifter off and uh, this should be ready to come out. All right, so I got a little nervous with this mount bolt because I didn't have a, a box wrench. It's a 19 millimeter bolt or nut. A nut. And all I had to do is take this little piece of plastic off that was here, two 10 millimeter bolts, this here, and a, and a clip over here. And Toyota was nice enough to leave enough room for you to fit a nice big ratchet in there. So if you don't have a box wrench, it's fine. And it's the same on the other side, on the passenger side. Okay, so this one came out and it took the stud with it. It's probably actually a good thing because then it'll make it a lot easier to get it off of there when I lift it up. Now for this one, uh, it's kind of tricky. If you don't have a deep socket, you're going to have to, well, also it depends on the mount you have. I, these are all aftermarket, so the stud's kind of long. 
You can fit the socket on there and then you can just... Yeah. yeah, well, it shouldn't be that way. And when you go to break it loose, uh, you want to push that way. Because if you push it, if you pull it this way and your condenser is still here and you bust a hole in this, you're going to have a bad time. And then for that last one over here, it ought to be pretty easy. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that one out off camera. Here I am lifting the engine out of the vehicle. Notice how I'm lifting it a little bit at a time to make sure I didn't forget any loose vacuum lines or wires or anything like that. At this point here, I realized I needed to take the passenger side engine mount bracket off of the engine in order for it to lift up and out. And then here I realized the passenger side axle was stuck in the transmission still somehow and I had to take care of that before I went any further. And here, it's out. All right, well, it's 11 o'clock at night and the engine and transmission is out. I did have a few little things happen when I was pulling it. A couple of little minor, minor things. I caught them before it got bad. The only bad thing that really happened was that axle somehow, I had it all the way out, but somehow it made its way back in. I guess when I was pulling it out and shifting it back and forth, it probably made its way back in. So it was trying to pull the axle out with it and it stretched the crap out of that boot. But uh, it looks okay from up here. Uh, so that may need to get replaced. Um, I'm thinking probably not though, because it's not a ball axle. As you can see here, it's one of those uh, roller axles. But she's out. All I gotta do now <laughs> is I gotta take the transmission off of here. I gotta break all these big bolts, which I thought about doing while it was still on the car, but I figured I'd just pull it out and it'd be easier to reach that way. Uh, I'll just have, I got it sitting on these boards. I got a little bit of weight on this just to keep it from falling over. I still got some energy, so I think I'm gonna try and split this engine and transmission. And uh, yeah. Yeah, baby. Um, only thing, the speed sensor, unplug it. All right, I've got the transmission separated from the engine. Uh, only really thing I gotta say about it, uh, there's a couple of bolts that might be hidden. There's one on the, there's these, you know, these ones are some 14 millimeter bolts, and then these ones are 17s. And there's one 14 millimeter bolt that's kind of hidden uh, right here behind the speed sensor. Uh, but other than that, pretty straightforward. Get all those out and then just be patient. Kind of wiggle it apart with a, use a screwdriver if you had to, just don't pry on it too hard. It should come off pretty easily. Put a little bit of weight on the engine hoist and uh yeah <laughs> all right i'm gonna try to pick that transmission up and manhandle it maybe not pick it up but just kind of get it over here dude big brain why didn't i think of this i'll just roll the hoist over there because i, I want to get the transmission over there to that dirt area so i can flip it over without making a mess on the concrete and pull that pan off because i need that pan for the new transmission because the new transmission has a hole in the bottom of it because they punch a hole in them at the junkyard to uh to drain the fluid out i'm gonna set the camera up so if i die you guys can watch all right let's see how this goes i know this isn't the best angle but it's the best i can do so apologies <laughs> yeah you want to get your head right there so if this all falls over it'll crush your head okay this actually isn't that bad oh yeah look at that that engine wants to come off of there I'm not gonna roll the hoist into the dirt because that would be bad. All right, so right there is where it needs to be. Now I just gotta get this down. Let me pick this up out of the way. All right, you go. Oh, All right, I'm just gonna grab this thing. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty heavy for a little guy like me. I'm only like 130 pounds. I go to the gym, but not as much as I should. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> All right, you guys ready to watch me throw my back out?
walking it. Trying not to bust the pan up because I need it. Right now I'm gonna flip it over. Oh yeah. It's got the good old trusty rusty GMT 800 watching over us. That's a lot of bolts there. Ooh, ooh. Oh, okay, that's pretty interesting. In case you're wondering what the inside of your transmission looks like on your Camry, this is it. Really not much going on in here. This is the filter I'm gonna have to replace on, not on this one, on that one. But uh, if you look here, we've got this uh, magnet section. Just look how much metal shavings we got on those magnets. That is insane. It's metal putty. Look, there's another one right here. That is insane how much metal is on there. Look, this is just rubbing, look, okay, this is my, my thumb is still clean, watch. Oh my goodness, no wonder this thing went out. I mean, it, had, <laughs> it did pretty well. 350,000 hard miles. Uh, so that's what 350,000 hard miles on a bad Trent, uh, Camry transmission looks like. Very interesting. I guess now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that transmission and drag it over here and get it ready to go on there. Cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that on the engine and then I'm gonna lift it up and I'm gonna take the pan off while it's lifted up. Cause I don't wanna, I don't wanna do it uh, while it's in the car because when it's in the car, it sits right over this subframe and it makes it hard to get to the bolts on that end. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do this with it on there. Uh, I gotta wait till tomorrow when the uh, gasket and the new filter comes in, but I'm gonna at least try to see if I can get it on on the engine tonight. Oh, that was a workout. I don't really care about that pan because I'm putting that one on it. So I probably scratched it up pretty good, but that's okay. A uh, quick note, if you get a transmission from the junkyard, make sure it has a torque converter. And if it does, or when it does, grab yourself a piece of metal off the ground and a bolt if you can and just thread it in there hold the converter so it doesn't fall out because you don't want to lose you don't want to lose the fluid that's in there if there is any in there because if you do it'll lose its prime and that's gonna be bad make just make sure this doesn't fall out whatever you do all right well my back hurts i couldn't get it up I tried using the jack and jacking up the back and just kind of picking up on that side, but that got sketchy because I was running the risk of dropping the converter. So then I tried using a ratchet strap on the hoist and lifting it up by that, and I broke my ratchet strap. <laughs> yeah, it was a little cheap Walmart one anyway. So I'm just going to put it all down for tonight. I need to wait till tomorrow and get somebody over here to help me lift this thing up. So uh, that's going to do it for tonight. So right now I'm just waiting on someone to help me get the transmission up here so I can bolt it to the engine. Um, while I'm waiting on that, I'm uh, cleaning these transmission cooling lines because um, you might not have to do this, but your if your transmission was fluid was really extremely burnt like mine was, you really don't want any of that cancer getting from the old one into the new one. So I'm just cleaning them out, blew some air through those. I'm blowing some air through the uh, transmission cooler on the radiator. Just trying to get as much of that crap out of there as I can so that I don't uh, contaminate old bad fluid with the new transmission and the new fluid. So uh, we'll be back whenever I get this up onto that and start getting ready to put it back into the car. Right before this clip, I found that O'Reilly's had given me the wrong transmission filter, so I ended up reusing the filter that was in the new transmission, and I also was able to reuse the pan gasket because it was still nice and soft. I really just needed to swap the pans over. Um, at this point, I was running a little behind on schedule, so 
I didn't film quite as much, but it's all pretty self-explanatory putting it all back together. If you can take it apart, you can put it back together. Take your time with it. Try to get some help if you can. It can be done by yourself, but there is a couple of things you're definitely going to want an extra hand with. All right, so it's another night now. It's probably around 10 o'clock right now because uh, I got home from work and I fell asleep and I just did not have any energy. Uh, we got Corey here tonight. He hasn't really been helping, mainly because his back has been hurting him, so... Uh, we got all the heavy stuff done, so... Don't hurt your back, kids. Yeah, it's not fun. All we got to do, we already got the belts on, which, that was a, that was a story. Uh, all we got to do is get everything, all the little stuff hooked back up, and I'm not really going to film too much, because I'm just ready to see it run, but it's pretty self-explanatory. It all goes back together the way it came off. Just take your time with it. Um... This thing may run tonight in the next couple hours or so, so uh, we'll be back. All right, a little update. Uh, I got the shifter on. I got the torque converter bolts cranked down. He's getting the starter on right now. Uh, he's also got a bunch of the wiring plugged in. He's got all those little plugs. Get the heater hoses done, the exhaust done. Yeah, uh, a couple of little vacuum lines here and there. Uh, yeah. Moving right along. Right, well, we're just about ready to start this thing. It's fixing a amp wire here. Yeah, topped on. off, topped off the radiator, power steering, and put about four quarts in the trans. So uh, we're gonna fire it up, let everything kind of circulate and get some heat in it. Check all the fluids again. Let it run, get all the way up to temperature. Check everything again, and then uh, put up all the tools, and then we're ready for a drive here soon. Yeah. All right. Oh, he's getting attacked by a locust. Oh, there he is. He's on the ground in front of the hoist. Oh, yeah. Look at him. Right there. All right. It's a big one. He is on. Firing. Yeah. Let's check the light. Well, the power steering will go down. That's good. Okay. Gotta shine the light underneath. Make sure there's no obvious leaks. Nothing pouring out, so that's a good sign. Cool, it went down. Good. A little bit of oil residue burning up. I guess go ahead and uh, put it in reverse and then drive, and then we'll check the blood stick. Got race mode. Uh, the, the brake rotor is wobbling too, just because it's not pulled it out. Yeah, we got drive. Okay, neutral, stop the wheels, and put in park. park. Let's go ahead and check the stick here. Uh, here, you want to take this? Yeah. Ugh. And we're low. We're low. Just half poured in. Yep, so we got a quart and a half left, so hopefully it's enough. All right, good luck in there, little guy. He's done. We're gonna, uh, he's gonna follow me in the good old trusty rusty GMT 800. 20 minute drive back home and see how it does. And uh, take you guys along for the ride. All right, we got drive. Something we didn't have before. There's Corey. Oh, it went in the second. Very crisply, too. All right, we're gonna get out on the highway here and we'll be right. back. Let's see how it does on the road here. Oh, so crisp. Very nice. Shift in the third was a little, a little jerky, but I mean, I'd rather that than the slush box it was before. So we're in fourth right now. Let's see if we can get the torque converter to lock. It should lock at 45. Yep, we got torque converter lock. All right, we're turning on to the main highway here. 
complete stop. Give her a little gas. Oh yeah. The shift from second, <clears throat> the shift from second to third is a little funky, but all the rest of them are perfect. I'm tempted to see how it really does, but I'm really just trying to baby it. Really just trying to get a feel for it and baby it for a while. All right, so with that, the Camry is fixed. She's got, she just needs a good washing and uh, detailing and she'll be good to go. Shifts are absolutely perfect. Um, it does shift a little bit a little bit hard from second to third but i think that's just because the old transmission actually had a shift flare issue between second and third so i think the ecm is just needing to readjust to the new transmission so that should hopefully go away after a few days or so uh but it shifts a lot better all things considered than it did before First to second is absolutely flawless, and uh, third to fourth is absolutely flawless. Just second to third is a little hard, but like I said, I'm pretty sure that'll fix itself once the ECM learns the new transmission. So uh, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, do all that stuff, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.